Hey, how y'all doing out there today? This is Pastor Kelly, Pastor Dolly. Good morning. Hi. How you doing? Hello. We uh, it's good to be back with you. Yes. Uh, we're still looking at the image of God. I think because it's not just the image of God; it's the image of you. We yes. were made in His image. Yes. So how you view Him is how you really view yourself and. If you've got a bad outlook on yourself, it's hard to see God any other way because you're seeing through a filter of whatever hurt and you're, you're seeing yeah. through an image that, of yourself. That's true. So That's true. I think we talked about these two verses, but I want to go back and look at them real quick. Romans 2, <clears throat> he says uh, in verse 21, Romans 2, 21, because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. But uh, yeah, one. I'm sorry. 121. Uh, but they weren't thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was dark, and professing themselves to be, to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. It says they did this. Yeah. yeah. They did this by not seeing God and for who he was. They knew him, but they didn't glorify him and thank him. And then in Psalms 105 or 106, it says the same thing. When they, they, they got a bad view of God, and you can go back and read the verse, you know, they under, they didn't understand him, they didn't remember, they, they didn't sing his praise, they soon forgot all the things that he did for them. Mm -hmm. And verse 19, 106, 19, it says, They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped and worshipped the molten image. Thus they changed their glory. Yes. So it, it, it ties, it's tied together. When we, change, when we change the glory of God, that in turn changes our image. Because whatever we start worshipping, we're going to start taking on that image. That's right. That's, you know, right. that's why you see all the you know, football mm. fans don't wear three-piece suits. They wear football jerseys because they worship football you know that's a loose interpretation of that but we we start taking on the image of what we see the most yeah. what we what we focus on the most you know i'm not saying worship is so much as a church service but things that you really admire and things that you really spend a lot of time focusing on are things you start becoming like that yeah, you know, even even the in the in the Bible, whenever um, Jacob was trying to leave his father-in-law's house and he needed some some payment, yeah, and God told him, they said, you know, when all these cows get pregnant, you take all the spotted and speckled mm -hmm. and striped, and you leave all the solid ones with him. And then God said, I'm going to tell you what I want you to do. I want you to put sticks with some carvings on them of circles and stripes and spots and stuff. Put them in their water, and while they're drinking, the ones that you want to have reproduce. The ones, when they're drinking, they're going to get the image. They'll see. They'll see <coughs> spots and stripes and stuff. And sure enough, when they started <coughs> having babies, the babies were all striped and spotted and stuff. Yeah. And that is a, that is in the Bible, that is a clear reflection of whatever you're keeping in front of your eyes, you're going to be just like it. Yeah. And so if your image of God is that he's mean, he's hard, he's, you know, has no mercy, he's judgmental. If you really think <coughs> that... You'll you will emulate that in your life. And that's where so many religious people are so mean. You know, the Christians well, you'll, have you'll, a bad you know, reputation. You'll, deep down, if that's your image of God, deep down, you'll feel like an inmate or a slave right. or a servant. And thus, then you're going to start trying to treat people like slaves and servants. And you're going to come exactly. off as a taskmaster yes. the same way you see like God. When you're, right, with your perception... <laughs> inside you is not of a taskmaster. You think you're serving God. You're just serving him in the, it's all perception. It is. You know, the, Genesis says we were made in his image. Yeah. And we know that went sideways. But then in the New Testament, we know that we've been reborn, right. not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. That's right. Of his own free will, that's in James. Of his own free will begat he us with the word of truth. That we should be a kind of first fruits yeah. of his creatures. First fruits of his creatures is something new. Jesus is the first fruit. He was the first one to come down here as flesh and blood, be anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, be inhabited by God, and let God walk out through this earth his will. Right. He was the example. Now we're a kind of 
the same thing. Right. right. Kind means, you know, what kind are you? We've been, we've been doing a, a, a series here in church, what manner of man? Yeah. What kind of man are you? You know, you the kind that, that, that has no faith or you the kind that walks on water or talks to the sea and talks to the storm? Right. What what manner of man is this? And so it's it's just what kind are we? And what we lost, here's the thing. What God created, the enemy cannot recreate. He can't change it. He can't destroy it. He can't. He has no. Power. He has. He has. He has no creative power. He has no. He is. He is. He's a fallen archangel. We talked about. He can't undo what God has done. That's right. What he can do is lie. Right. And get you to pursue. It's what he did in the garden. He lied to Eve, and when she, when the, when they crossed the line with God, their perception changed. They saw something different. God showed up, and in like a normal day, hey, where are you at? Everything was fine until they said, well, you know, we saw ourselves naked. Right. And he's like, okay, wait a minute. Who? Yeah, we've got a wrong image. Yeah, we've got so. <laughs> some, something's happened where you're, you're, you're saying things that are not right. Right. And so when we go through the New Testament, we know, you know, Second uh, Corinthians 3.18 says, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's so much we're changed into. I think when after, at the fall of the garden, when man fell, the enemy started throwing dirt and covering up and throwing some little, you know, just, just everything he could to hide and give a bad image, a bad self image of what God had created. What the perfection that God created in Genesis is still there. What he's doing through the New Testament through Jesus Christ is a washing with water by the word. You get in this word and you get a revelation and you say, wait a minute, and a little bit of dirt comes off. And the more, the, the more we can do that, the closer we get back to what God originally created because God creates things that are eternal. And we're, you're in there. The Genesis you is in here through Jesus Christ. He has declared us sin free, declared us righteous, declared us holy so that we can start using those weapons against the enemy. When the enemy comes at me and says, Oh, you did this. Okay. Yeah, I did, but it's not about me. The covenant's not about me. God made a covenant with himself. Back in, in Psalm 106, we, you know, one of our favorite verses, nevertheless. Right, right. Yeah, we did all these wrong things. Nevertheless, God saved us because he said he would. That's right. He saved us for his name's sake. That's right. So the enemy comes at me and says, oh, you did. Yeah, but God says I'm holy. That's right. But you said, but God says I'm righteous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. But God says through the blood of Jesus he is. He sees me like I truly am. Exactly. Now I need to start finding out what that is, so I can truly see Him for who He is. And that's kind of like the salvation of our soul. You know, when you're <clears throat> illuminated, what happens is God reveals to yeah. you the correct image in just a split second. You get a little glimpse of the right image. What God says about you, or what God thinks yeah. about you, or. or how God a kernel, views you. Another truth. You just get this one little blip, and just that you received a seed, the seed of the Word of God, and that seed gets in your heart and starts producing. And you know, it it there's seasons and things, but this thing is going to be producing, and it's going to grow, and it's going to keep coming. And what happened, you know, in this last season here in this in the world, right? What now? It's going on all over the news and all over the newspapers and all over social media and all the things happening right now is God spoke to me and said, this is the harvest of the tares because there were some wrong things sown into us also. And they have to both grow up. And then when it's your harvest season, the wrong things, God can take them and destroy them and get them out of your life. And then you can, then you get to produce the good stuff. So we've got that word in us and God wants us to protect that word, that, that image. Every time he shows you a little glimpse of who you are, you're loved. You're forgiven. You know, there's a calling. There's a reason for your life. There's a purpose. You're anointed. You're blessed. You're this, you're that. Whatever God says to you, that one statement 
that little glimpse of who God is. It, it tells us over in, in John. I don't know if I have a quick. In 1 John 3, verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Yeah. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. As you see God for who he truly is, when you really understand that you're loved and you see God and God loves you unconditionally. And when you really get that revelation, because the Holy Spirit will that, you. That will set you free. It will not only I set mean, you free and make you, your life, your complete life will change because you know you're loved. And every decision you make now will be different because yeah. you're not being manipulated and controlled trying to win people. Yeah. So you're loved and everything's good. And then what happens is, ba-bam, bonus, you now have the ability to love other people. Yeah. Man, it's, then it's, you become just like God. Yeah, it's, it's like that with your own kids. You know, your own kids, when they're smaller and stuff, I don't even think they have a concept of love. They just kind of want everything they want, and they go through the motions. This is the people that give me food and money and clothes and all that stuff. At some point in their growth pattern, though, they come to a realization that these people love me. You know? Yeah, I mess up all the time. I break things. I, I fill up my diaper. I do all these things. And yet they still love me. Right. And it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a freedom. You get into a realization and it brings a freedom where you, you're not performing anymore. You know, they don't love me because I right. do things right. You're, they don't love me because I made my bed or I, you know, they just love me because I'm theirs. Acceptance. Because I'm theirs. Right. I'm their child. Because they chose to. And when you come, when, you know, it's hard for us as parents because now you got to turn around and look at it through the eyes of a child and look at God and say, he loves me because I'm his child. Right. And he and, chose to. He decided to. And you can start seeing him for who he is. And then that can start, that, that helps you change who you see, who you are. Right. How you see yourself. Because I'm telling you, it's all a perception thing. It is. It, it, it's completely, God already, God knows how he sees. You know, so many people think that the problems that they're facing in their life are because of outside circumstances. Yeah. Because, you know, I wasn't treated right. They're not doing me fair. You know, oh, these people are in political office. Oh, these people are in political office. Oh, well, the economy is right. falling apart. Oh, well, my we hero, the story. people I looked at and idolized, well, they fell, you know. And you've, we've all got all these things, and we think that those things are determining who we are. Are we happy? Are we healthy? Are we successful? Are we blessed? But the truth is, it's all based on our image, how we see ourselves, we see ourselves. based on how we see God or whatever we consider our God to be. Our God is our Father God, Jehovah. And so He He loves, He, you know, blesses right. and stuff. So when we see Him for who He is, we'll be just like Him. It says, and then it says in James 1, um, don't be doers of the word. And he, not uh, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if you're a hearer of the word and not a doer, you're like a man looking in the glass. You can look and you can hear what we're saying right now. And you can see the reflection. And you can choose to just walk away and not think about it anymore. Or you can let the enemy steal this from you. And, and what will happen is you'll end up being somewhere where you're not supposed to be again. But when you hear this and you decide, I'm going to do this. Hey, you know what? I believe that. And I'm going to get that word and keep putting it in me and, and build that thing and water that seed and watch over that seed and guard that seed until yeah. I know it, until it's at a full fruit. That's why, that's why the relationship with God is so important. It's not about the rules and regulations. It's about knowing God. You spend time in prayer. Spend time in this word. It's like she's saying, you got to be a doer of it. And back in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he says, uh, if this gospel, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on When we get in this word, we start taking on the image of Christ. We yeah. start, which is the image of God. So yeah. it's all, it, it, it's all connected. It's all about how you see yourself and how you see God. That's why that relationship is so crucial. So however you do it, through prayer, meditation, the, the word, church service, spend time with God and let him reveal your true um, image. That's it. Praise God. It's good stuff. Thanks for being there. Uh, we'll see you on the next one and uh, have a good one. Bye.